Janelle of the Java Tears Podcast, and I am definitely amazing. Are you? What's up, everybody? It's your man, Random Man, and it is definitely amazing's DA Lady Sipping Conversations. Now, I know you've watched episode one and two, and you've seen us with those nice little mugs, and we're fancy, we're drinking wine and all that good stuff. Screw that. <laughs> Today we go with Crown Raw. <laughs> um, but I couldn't just get royalty without having royalty right next to me. <laughs> so, when you want to take your podcast to the extreme, when you want to have a hell in the cell for the airways, there is only one person who will be able to be the special guest referee for that madness. And that is the juxtaposition to all things amazing. She is Janelle from the HR. I don't think I could ever have another introduction after that. <laughs> like we gotta have, we got to sound bite that because that was pretty good. It's what I do. But <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm just as honored because I'm typically in your position. Right. <laughs> so now that I'm not in that position, I can have some fun. I can have a little drink. You get to chill. The boys don't drink. Right. So right. we couldn't have them on this show. Uh, you know what? Wilkins would have entertained it. Maybe he would have had a sip. Right, right. Mr. Right. Black won the drink. He would have smoked before we got on camera. Right, right. But if you're wondering what, what, who the people she's talking about, she's talking about the guys from the Jobber Tears podcast. Duh. <laughs> um, uh, so it's so funny because we still get like amazing people know our podcast. Like the other day, I went to there's this gaming, like underground gaming spot by my house in, in Brooklyn. You must tell me about this. We must talk and, off camera about this. <laughs> well, I can say, okay, it's called Coexist. It's okay. Really, really dope. It's literally, someone turned their apartment into like a video game spot. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm there, excited already. No, it's bar, and the bartender was like, I've seen that because we were, I was wearing my, my Java Tears podcast shirt. He's like, I've seen that somewhere before. And I was just like, you have? Like, are you sure? <laughs> He's like, yeah. Like, you guys talk about wrestling. Blah, blah. He told me about my podcast. So, I was just like, Oh, okay, I just wanted a shot of honey, because <laughs> I always feel like you're on, I'm on, so it's just huh. like sometimes I just don't want to be on. But I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to play some games because yeah. I'm super competitive. Yeah, um, and I'm excited to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Listen, I, I am excited. You shocked me because I don't I don't think no one knows me until they. That's anyone. Like I think I to this day still think no one listens to our podcast that people don't know about. Like to this day, like we're all. Obli I mean, we're but you guys, to. you guys rock though. Like, oh, we try. Like, thank you, thank you so there, much. Like, <laughs> there are, there are, there are my, there are my top five, and then you guys are my top of that top five. But like, I, I always say, wow, I know about these other podcasts because they've either had something to do with you guys or you guys shot them out. Which is another thing you guys do. You show so much love. People say that the wrestling podcast community doesn't show love. Well, you don't listen to Jobber Tears. <laughs> they show, show love all the time. Times and times because we, we just have this philosophy of like, if, if we're eating at this, like if we're at this table, you're eating, this person's eating, this person's eating, this person's eating because we all are in this together. Right. Shout outs to you for the Cactus Jack shirt. Though. So, not funny story because it's not really a funny story. But whenever WrestleMania is WrestleMania season, or if I'm planning to go to WrestleMania, it's the only time I buy merch. Okay. I'll I'll go to plenty of shows, up and down, Raw, SmackDown, whatever. I won't buy any merch. Similar, me and Wave, we do the same thing. We 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 uh <laughs> we plan out. <laughs> We're doing it now. We're like. Okay, so we're gonna set aside money for this merch. We're gonna get this merch before this show, and we're gonna do this. So yeah, we do. We do. So whenever it's WrestleMania time and I'm planning to go, I always like, all right, this is merch time. So planning for Tampa was hard because one minute it was happening, next minute it's not. One minute it is happening, next minute it's not. So when we yeah, finally was tickets is bought, hotel is uh, Airbnb is bought, everything's already set. I'm like, all right, what am I wearing? So I've always wanted this shirt. This shirt and the um, Eddie Guerrero Latino Heat shirt with mm -hmm. two shirts like forever and a day I've been mm -hmm. wanting to have. So I bought those. I bought a Ric Flair and Macho t-shirt mm -hmm. honoring their match from um, WrestleMania 8. Mm -hmm. Great um, match, by the way. 
that which should have been a main event, but that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Anyway, I had bought, um, what else did I buy? I bought, oh, the um, Bianca Belair EST shirt because I which wanted I to wear to that. Some, I am a Bianca Belair stan. Let me tell you, when she won, it, just, it felt like time stopped. Like, I can physically tell you just being there with my poncho in the rain, everything stopped. Like, it was nothing but, like, holy we shit. Had that, we had that moment for Kofi Mania. It was, it oh, was Kofi first, was the same. It was his first uh, WrestleMania back. I had oh. been to several WrestleManias, but this was his first WrestleMania back. Uh, Kofi's and, was the same because we actually, well, we, I didn't, that was the, it's funny. My first WrestleMania was the 29, which was here. And then after that, I was like, I'm never going to New York, but I'm always going to travel. So I've been to Dallas, um, Orlando, New Orleans. Nice. And in Tampa just now. Nice. Um, but when WrestleMania was here, we had the viewing party, which was mm -hmm. we didn't think was going to be big, but we had Al Snow hosts, mm -hmm. and we had a whole bunch of legends there. It just was. It ended up being bigger than what we thought. But the moment where we had Crime Time and MVP at the bar at the same time. Rest in peace, like, uh, Shad Gaspar. Absolutely. Man. Like it just, it just felt so right. And then when Kofi won, it just was like. I said to myself, if I'm gonna have somebody that's a wrestling fan, that's as big as a wrestling fan as I am on this show, I'm gonna ask them some wrestling Don't questions. Don't hit me trivia. No, 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 oh. I wouldn't do that to, to them. Trivia. Let me just tell you this. <laughs> I told you this off camera, I'm gonna tell you this on camera so you know it's real. <laughs> that's a bar. You are my favorite part of, of Job Repairs <laughs> podcast. Nothing against the boys. Nothing. But you're my favorite part of it. I and, appreciate it. And then they had the nerve to bring me on as a special guest <laughs> the day that you're not there. But we'll talk about that. They probably uh, did, though. I tell people all the time. I'm like, if I'm the only reason if I'm not there is because I'm traveling somewhere. But, I went somewhere. But, but, but they knew. That was a jab. You know? You know? That, that, that right there was they a rib. They felt like. That was a rib. They probably did. They were ribbing me. I know they were ribbing me. Uh, tell me, what was the first wrestling match that made you fall in love with wrestling? Ooh. The very first one? Mm-hmm. Um, I can't say match because it's so long ago, but what I will say is what made me fall in love with wrestling actually was ECW, Ooh. believe it or not. So I was that kid on a Saturday night where at 1 o'clock I watched <laughs> Apollo, and that went off. <laughs> then at 2 o'clock in the morning, if you were on public access TV, right. so ECW came on. Right. So right. I would, we watched, I would, so this is actually how, when I, if I go to events, I don't feel crazy because I don't hear commentary. So I actually started watching wrestling mute because <laughs> I didn't want anyone to know I was up. Right. So I would watch it mute and I like, I would see Taz, I would see Sabu, I would see Tommy Dreamer. So like ECW was my beginnings of wrestling and then I, it's funny, it was ECW, then I transitioned into WCW because I would watch Nitro and I would watch Saturday, WCW Saturday night, mm -hmm. which I'm mad because Peacock only has 93 and I want like 95, but whatever. Um, and then I got into when they had the Monday Night Wars is when mm -hmm. I started like flipping back and forth and then kind of like when Vince said, put his dick on the table and was like, all right, I'm going to yeah. hold on this. Yeah, pretty much. And <laughs> I just watched that. This is now all my stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> give me that. And then... Bump. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I would say it was a transitional, but I would say ECW was like the first thing where I watched and I was just like, this is like soap operas. I love this. I love it. I love <laughs> it. I love it. All right. Um, I, for one, say, if, since this is sipping conversations, we have to have a sip. Oh. I don't know if she's gonna sip, <laughs> but let's distract this bad boy. I'm down with that. To be honest, and and and, and we don't have the mugs because I said we got a table. <laughs> so we ratchet. This yeah, episode? yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Now, if I would have known, I'd have bought some glasses. Listen, I'm all with it. Because I have them in my house. Listen, next time you guys have me on the show, I will bring I will bring you Hennessy. Well, no, I'll bring a bottle next time. You okay, I'm I down feel with like that. that. Look at this. this is, Whose idea was this? Who's this is him. This? this is all we. Sir. <laughs> Um, while we were off camera, everybody got a, a shot board of Crown Royal Vanilla. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Much success to you. Much success to you. And then everyone in the room. We got some ginger ale. Yeah, I'm going to take hit, that. Hit the ginger ale. That, that was rough. Listen. Actually, you know what? I'll take one shot. Yeah, I'm going to do, do one shot uh, without the ginger ale. By itself. It's so nice. And like if you had any Ooh, this ice is cream? DiSorono. Huh? This is like DiSorono. Yes. Oh. Let me tell you something. I put I down change. a bottle of DiSorono. That's dangerous. 
we uh, we already asked the the the, the fantastic question about the infamous wrestling, the infamous wrestling question, but you. The reason why I talk about the fact that you're Janelle from the HR, I've always looked at it as this. I know the reason behind the name, but I always looked at it as this. You have to be HR because you have to deal with the two. Control. They are the Bret Hart and Owen Hart of, of podcasting. Oh, that is the best description of them. <laughs> I love them dearly because it's, it's funny because so Sir Wilkins is my best friend. Mm -hmm. been, been my best friend for over 70 years. So like... When he wanted to start doing the podcast, I was like, okay. And then he put his brother involved. So it's just like, I, I'm the sister that they probably didn't even think they could have. And in you the middle usually of have to corral these two. You usually have to. Yeah, I gotta bring them back in. What is it like corralling <laughs> Mr. Black and Sir Wilkins? Because I was a guest host and I couldn't. It's not. So everyone always, it's funny. Everyone always tells me that. And it's everyone that's either co like hosted and like, replace of me or just watching it is they're always like how do you do it like they're both so loud and strong and they mean they say what they mean mean what they say i just think i i guess it could be my tone so i'm just like okay but what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna talk over me though right so right, like, right. there's a level of respect i think we've built because you know mr black coming into the picture like we didn't we didn't have that type of relationship um, but now, like, because we all know each other, we know what we like, what we don't like, um, how we talk with each other. That's why it's so important, like, the foundation of our podcast was really just focusing on us. Like, we didn't have guests on, I don't think, for the first, like, 20 episodes. Right, right. right like, we were very strict on just not, it, it being us so we could build a rhythm. Right. But I think for me, it's just, it's the tone. It's just like, okay, well, so, yeah, I'm going to let y'all say what y'all want to say, <laughs> but when I cut y'all off, it's a wrap. Right. So, in media. Was it was it was it the podcast or were you? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say for me, I went to shout out to St. John's University. Um, I went to school for advertising, but never really got into like media stuff. So right. like all of my 20s, I, I, I guess my shoot job, I worked in sales right. or customer service. So I've always done that. Um, but yeah, in terms of being in the camera and that was why Wilkins was scared to ask me. So funny story, but not funny. He had posted on Facebook when he wanted to start doing a podcast, are there any females interested in doing a podcast? So I felt the way about that shit. I said, excuse me. I would have felt the way about it too. <laughs> and then his thing was, I didn't think you would want to do it. Like, you know, you're so like not in front of a camera type of thing, right. which I'm not, I'm very behind the scenes. Right. So I understood why he didn't ask me, but I gave him that, nigga, if you don't ask me, and like I Nick. said yes. So, <laughs> That's how that started was. <laughs> so then I told myself, I'll do it. Cause to me, it's like, he's like my brother. So like whatever, he has a dream. If I can help, if I can do my due diligence, I'm there. I just didn't think it would be what it is today. Right, right. I mean, <laughs> like I look back, I'm like. Who could have known who, you got? Who does I mean, all this? Man, I mean, just the amount of people that you guys have met in the wrestling world, yeah. the amount of people that you guys are now not just colleagues with but friends with i mean you are cool with one of my secret crushes Ooh. and one of my one of my people I, I would love to have her on any show uh faye jackson oh shout I am, out to miss faye. listen i am I, I have been i've watched every match of faye <laughs> and, and, and because of you guys i got vanity because when i told vanity oh, i was like hey i was like hey you know i want to get you on the show and yes just so you know we had mr black on the show she's like oh i know those guys and, so yeah, but so. A, a quick story about faith because i love her and even though she's i think everything's a work in wrestling that's just yeah, it, my mentality this is definitely a work i think everything's <laughs> a work um but faye decided um you know she was injured so that's why she didn't wrestle during right. wrestlemania weekend right um but she decided to step away from the business come thank her because she's the reason why i did commentary for the first time during mm -hmm. wrestlemania weekend mm -hmm. and it was for the for great her. sweatpants <laughs> battle royal <laughs> it was a great adventure yes <laughs> to it say the least and what was cute what was cool <laughs> was and we sponsored it um what was cool about it was she gave me a pair of gray sweats and all the participants in the battle royal signed it. Ha! So, which I thought was so because so J so JTG was he was yeah. the winner. So I got out. I was like, oh, so he autographed up the, the crotch. I was like, oh, 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 oh. Um, 
This is but, my kind of show. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a no, minute. We all not yes. act like I don't got problems. Yes. Listen. But, uh, but no, I have to always thank her for that because I've. Ne- I, if someone would told me two, three years ago when we started the podcast that I would be doing commentary for a match during WrestleMania weekend, I'd be like, no. <laughs> I'm just gonna go to the show. It's fine. So I'm always forever thankful of Miss Faye Jackson. Listen, so. I am. I. I, I am. I am pro Janelle doing more Janelle. Like anything that you do, I was like, all right, let's get some more Janelle. Yeah. Speaking of more <laughs> Janelle, you give the people more Janelle, but you make it spicy. Yes. Uh, with Sazon Talk. Yes. So, How did that come about? So Sazon Talk came about, shout out to my amazing, phenomenal co-host, Amanda. Um, I personally just wanted to do something outside of the boys. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> as much as I love them, as much as I love wrestling, and everyone knows it's a part of who I am, but it's not all of me. So right. I wanted to give people a different side of me and also, in a sense, uh, embrace my, my, my background. So fun fact about me, I'm half black, half Cuban. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to present that in a way where it encouraged other Afro-Latinas to have a voice, to have a platform and do things like that. So I did it more for let's just get out there and Amanda's very sweet and quiet. So let's break out of the mold and do something different. So it's that song talk. That's how that came about. Um, you guys we, recently had we uh, had a phenomenal <laughs> intimacy sex coach on our last episode. <laughs> yes. Shout out to Miss Sherelle Thomas from Chicago, from Chi-Town. Mm-hmm. Um, it was so dope to have her just because I'm all about giving people a platform. Like I, I right. anything I do is never about me. I tell people that all the time. I'm like, it's not about me. I don't That's need to spotlight. That's the purpose of definitely me. Anything I do in wrestling, whether it's commentary, whether it's doing a show, hint, hint, wink, wink. Um, July 31st, hint, hint, wink, wink. Um, place to be determined soon, wink, wink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's so that I'm not the last. And I think that's how I always go into things. It's like, if I'm doing commentary as a female, that gives other women of color, other women in general, the opportunity to do it. So that's why I always say it's not, it's never about, like we, we are now in that phase where what we do is not for You know what time it is? It's time for. Oh, time. Definitely amazing, definitely not amazing. Random man game time. Um, how this goes is I'm gonna say something. Okay. A topic or okay. something. And you're gonna tell me whether it's definitely amazing or definitely not amazing. Now, Ooh. if it's definitely not amazing, okay. I want you to give me an explanation. Okay. If it's definitely amazing and you choose to give me an explanation, by, by all means. Okay. But you don't have to for definitely amazing. Okay, amazing. cool. Because if it's definitely amazing, there's no need for explanation. No, sometimes you may have to explain. Yeah, though, maybe, so. maybe, maybe, you know. So, <laughs> this one is a shot at you. Yes, I. <laughs> I am ribbing you on everyone this one. Everyone always, but it's, it's funny because that's all the boys, that everyone yeah. that knows This me, is a rib. Uh, AEW pay-per-views. Which ones? <laughs> <laughs> we already know what Wave would say. Because <laughs> Wave. So what's funny is, so I would say definitely amazing only because Dynamite is not definitely amazing. I like that. I like that. So I had to kind of flip it. So the pay-per-views outside of the dumbass ending, the pay per views for the most part they do Let's very not talk well, about that <laughs> and they don't because and also too they don't do it often. So I think them having the four pay per views a year, that's why I would say it's definitely amazing because okay. it's that. Uh, we're gonna stick in we're gonna stick in AEW. Uh, Kenny Omega's title reign currently definitely not amazing. <laughs> I agree with you one hundred percent. But why do you say definitely so? Definitely not. Um, because it doesn't do anything for the business. It's like like my grit with it and I said it on our podcast, is I'm all for if a company partners with a company and it benefits everyone, Right. cool, I'm here for it. The fact that Kenny Omega is now Impact Champion, TNA World Champion, and AEW World Champion, that doesn't benefit Impact. Not amazing. The Montreal Screwjob, Montreal. Ha! <laughs> I would say <laughs> it's funny because I think it is amazing, but just the fuckery with this. What it did for the business? Like, what it did for the business? I'm all about game changing for wrestling, so I would say it's definitely amazing because it transitioned Sean to being the main event and the only person. Very true. 
that was the he was he that turned Sean into the face of the company. Whether they wanted him to or not, that was that. Yeah. But then it also I don't know why Brett thought he was gonna walk out with that title and end up on <laughs> Nitro the, the Monday. Like I like if any time they talk about it, I really sit there and I'm like, but he Brett, really, did you really think they was he, gonna let you I walk? I think Brett thought no. Stables in wrestling. Love them. You love them? Definitely amazing. All right, me too. Favorite of all time is for Definitely okay. amazing, not amazing for you. This one is really important. Okay. Because I, 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 know you, I know you have a certain feeling about the women's tag titles in WWE. <laughs> but do you think women's tag titles are amazing or are they not amazing? Not, not saying the WWE, but just in general. In general. Oh, shit. That, that changes the ball game because Impact got it. Impact has it right. Right. WWE doesn't have a right. Well, they may be getting to it, but um, you know what? As how I feel about the women's tag team division in WWE, but overall, I would say it's definitely amazing. Really, anything for women's wrestling and progressing and moving up is definitely amazing. Like I went to Evolution when they had it, and everyone was shitting on it. And I was just like, I I had the best time of my life. Like, right. I don't know what you're right. talking about. Right. <laughs> right. I, was, I hashtag I was there. Like so, I think anything to progress women's wrestling is a plus. I think the I think here's something I'm gonna throw this out here. You can tell me if you think I'm stupid on this one or not. No, never. I think the women's division needs a mid card title. I don't think they have enough bodies for it. They don't. They don't. Which was what my grip was about doing the women's tag team titles right. because they don't have enough bodies. Right. And I'm very so as your, your previous question about stables, I'm very big on if a tag team is an actual tag team because it's a lot of chemistry. It's a lot of actually knowing the person you're, t you're teaming with. I and hate these throwing together tag teams. Throw, but you know what, sometimes, and that's why I'm like, fuck, it's like you're writing it wrong. Sometimes they work. So like when Cesaro and, um, Sheamus. And Sheamus were tag team champions, and they were the bar. The bar worked. Most random tag team throwing together because they went like, I think they did like, five matches together. I think Mick Foley was commissioner at the time and mm -hmm, he did like mm -hmm. the best of five series and it was stupid as fuck, but it, that essentially built them to being the tag team that ended up being the bar. So even going to Shayna and Nia, which I thought was a crap shoot, it ended up working out beautifully. Yeah. Oddly enough, but I'm very big on a tag team being a tag team. So like when the Iconics won at WrestleMania, it made sense. When even Bailey and Sasha were tag team champions, that was We, um, Cause, cause this, this right here could happen all night with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me just tell you something. Um, Janelle already knows. She hears me say it a bunch of times. Cause I'm always like in your guys. Um, <laughs> I'm always in the in the in the group chat. How much I love Jabra Tears, but she doesn't know. She she found out today that I'm her biggest fan. <laughs> I did, yeah, I, had, so, I, I don't believe in that. Like, so we can we can talk level. all day about wrestling stuff, but we yeah. have trouble here today. We're gonna play <laughs> trouble. It's not um, gonna be blue automatically. Oh my god, color. this is gonna take blue. I'll <laughs> take red. Color. I'll take red. Um, you, know, you gotta hit six to get out of. Oh, she hit six automatically. Look at that. All right. Oh, three. Okay. All right. I like that. I like that. Okay. So. Shit. <laughs> okay, is that you? You. Okay. Oh, five spaces. Oh. This. This is not going well for Ann. <laughs> so, fact, super competitive. So. Yes, she is. <laughs> All right, so what questions you got? For so, me? you are on a show with mm -hmm. your friends. Yes. And we currently found out that doing a show with your friends. <laughs> when you have millions of dollars on the line. We have millions of dollars on the line. Speaking of millions of dollars, can we do a little millions of dollars? Millions of dollars. Millions that of dollars. That was really a good, like. Yeah. We see that that doesn't always work. No, apparently not. Joe Budden um, Joey. fires his, his, his buddies on air. <laughs> the question amongst that is, do you believe that mixing friendship and business will always eventually lead to a Marty Jannetty, someone getting thrown through ah, a barbershop? <laughs> With the encompass of, you know, me doing a podcast with, with my best friend and, you know, there's money involved, there's things involved. So the thing is, you can't do business with people that's always going to put their, emo their feelings and emotions in a decision True. or in reacting True. to a decision. True. So where everyone's always is looking at Joey as the bad guy, 
But if there's an accounting issue and someone is signing, someone else is signing the check, someone else has the information, that's the person you need to roll up on and be like, where's my money at? Now, if they're all under contract and they're all, you know, not on the same level, because clearly Joey gonna make more than, than them. Right, right, right. But it's all about, sometimes it's really about the tone. It's not even so much what you say, it's how you say it. Right. So none of us is in, I'm, I've never been in front of none of them, so I don't know how, we don't know Rory, how it went down. When Rory went in there and was like, yo, where's my money at? He could have said that, or he could have said, Joseph, where's my money? I tend to believe Rory on this one, though, on, 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 on just. But see, the thing is, and also, too, if you know your friend, you already know how he going to be. Voting on camera was unnecessary, but if he's a breach of contract, then he's a breach of contract. I think, I think, and, and I always go back to this. Um, and then you can hit the bubble because you're already on the move. <laughs> um, I'm going to say I think that's where Joey, that's the only part I think that Joey was wrong in is that there's no reason other than Joey being Joey to fire you on camera. But see, I think, and that, I think for him and also, you know, watching, you know, because <laughs> guilty pleasure is reality TV. Right. He gets super defensive. He does. And he gets very like, how are you coming at me? Like, I, I want to do this for you, but you're coming at me this way. And you know, sometimes in certain situations, if you being business partners with your friends don't work, then I would rather save their friendship than be in business. Oh, like I tell uh, the boys absolutely. all the time, I said, listen, we can walk away from this shit today, but guess what? Yeah, we're all stuck with each other. Current events. Okay. And I'm gonna try to get out of start. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get out of. <laughs> I can't yeah. stand it. All right. Um, so, uh, logic. There is a man. His last name is Brown. <laughs> what? What is the man's first brown, first name? Man's first name is Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown Kwame. is currently the number one draft pick that the Washington Wizards pick, yes. which mm -hmm. I didn't understand why. Okay, but oh, here's okay. the thing. Here's but they the Jordan, but they, they, but they Jordan. <laughs> Kwame's been there, battling man. back with people, and we know in the business of wrestling, when someone says something bad about you, you have to have a promo about leave. That when you are in the spotlight, no matter what, you have to be able to have that ice cold demeanor and be cool with anybody saying anything about you. And then we're gonna speak about, do you so agree no, with him saying I anything? I don't think that, I think with whether it's media or anything, you have to be true to yourself. You have to be one <laughs> that, you have to be one that knows who you are, know who you are and, <laughs> you need to be one that knows who you are and be okay with, <laughs> You have to be okay with knowing that not everybody's going to agree with you, not everybody's going to believe True. in you, that you're going to get negative, you're going to get positive, you're going to get a whole bunch of gumbo of stuff. So Because he's not the first person to be a, to be a quote-unquote bust and people talk about him. For, I mean, Boz, the Boz from football will forever be known as a bust. Listen, it, I, listen Tim Tebow is out here... Right, no, hey, <laughs> Tim Tebow's out there. Everybody's thought on how things should be because I don't understand how you turn so a back into a tight end, but that's neither here nor there. When you enter that spotlight, there's gonna be critics, there's gonna be people that agree, disagree, whatever right. the case may be. You gotta kinda have, unfortunately, the tough skin to really deal with it. Just like even with our podcast, there, there, there's people out there that, that don't like us, that don't believe in us, that don't, but that's the energy you can't really focus on. Right. So I think it's one thing to stand up for yourself because I, that's kinda how I took it at first. With him, it's like, all right, I'm tired of being a laughing stock. I'm saying that for myself. Everybody, right. when Jordan said this to me, and I felt the way in my career. But then on the flip side, bro, you had a 12 year career in the NBA. What are we, what are we doing here? Like, there's no, there's you nothing really You want your mama a house. Like 20 years past this, people are gonna still talk shit about you. If you now wanna speak up for yourself, I just feel like it's a little too late. <laughs> like when people started talking about you 10 years ago, and using you still as the example of right. examples, right. that's when you should have said something. The most important question of this whole thing. Okay. So, Janelle. Yep. You jump in a time machine. <laughs> mm. And you happen to take the time machine back to an era where you were young. 
you get to choose the era. What would you say to the young Janelle? Tell me the era, and then tell me what would you, what advice you'd give to young Janelle? Oh boy. Uh, I hate the fact that you have o almost all yeah, four Yeah, I have one, so you just have to take that L. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, I have to say 16. Okay. I just started high, well, what was that, a sock? No, I was a freshman in high school. Okay. Because my birthday is later in the year, so I'm always a year, but like I graduated seven, at 17. So I'm always a year kind of to change my heart. Um, I say 16 because I think I was just, I didn't know who I was. And I mean, most people around that age doesn't, but I just really was just in like a, what am I doing with life? Where am I going to go to college? Where, what am I going to do? And I would just tell myself then to just have fun. Like, I think I took, you know, I mean, because I mean, I'm blessed because, you know, my mom always instilled in me like my work ethic, having an education, all that. So that was already always the forefront and that was always all that I saw. But I think at times, I didn't think I didn't get to really fully enjoy my teens. Like I think I was so focused on, all right, I gotta get into college, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta get great grades, I gotta be active in school. Right. I think, and of course I'm the firstborn, so I have my little brother right. and stuff like that. So I think I would tell 16 year old Janelle to just have fun, and I think to not take everything so serious. And I think that's what I've learned in my late 20s, early 30s now is just to have fun and to cherish those moments. And I think going, I'm going to bring it all back to the podcast. I think the podcast has helped me do that because it's helped me not take I totally everything agree. so serious and not take everything for a literal thing. I think for me, it's just, let's have fun with this. And I think that's what makes us so much different from everyone. Well, everybody, man, listen, I, I mean, look, listen, listen, I told you, That's this, funny. this is journalism. I was super philosophical. Listen, I wasn't ready. This is journalism. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll keep that sound bite in the show. This. I think you should. Is journalism. Um, Janelle, this oh, was amazing. This is fun. Oh, my God, this I, is fun. I, I don't get too many opportunities to be on the other side of the track. Right. So I think it's super dope um, and love what you're doing and keep doing you. what you're Appreciate doing it. because it's, you know, it's, it's adding to the culture. And I think I love most about podcasting because I never really thought about ever podcasting. But what I love about it, it brings people that you would have never thought you would meet and it makes you guys family and you know you're always a part of the Java Tears family yes and everybody in the room because you can't see them because they're behind the camera but they matter too they're awesome and they add once again value to the culture so whatever we do I always in our show with saying hashtag black excellence and I say that because we don't always get them anyone you got to take every opportunity for what it is and just run with it so I'm super proud of you so i don't thank want you to think as much as you say you're a fan of me listen we 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 on the same page like we in the struggle together <laughs> so but no i think what you're doing i think you know the amazing phenomenal women that you're interviewing and that you you get on your show i think it's awesome to highlight them and just give them that platform so i'm i'm proud and honored so i think i you. appreciate that <laughs> Everybody, tell everybody where they can find you, um, how they can listen to the podcast, all that good stuff. Follow us at the Java Tears Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at the Java Tears Podcast. Um, on YouTube, you can subscribe to our page, the Java Tears Podcast. You should Network. subscribe, not um, you can. We, you should. Do Mr. it. Mr. Black <laughs> gave a whole promo on how people watch but don't subscribe. Subscribe. So make sure to subscribe. Um, you can only, the beauty about, I think, our growth is we've been able to branch into different areas. So we have um, a few other podcasts outside of our main one where we have your sports. So shout outs to Dre, Matt, Tavia, yeah. and Peter. Um, <laughs> we have, of course, that song Talk With Me and the lovely Amanda. Spicy. Um, you have Two and a Half Bros with the ditzy and crazy um, Roro McNasty and Mr. Hidden with the Wee Wee. Mind you, I hate that. But Lauren <laughs> Ronaldo and Wilkins is on that. Um, so there is something for everyone. It doesn't have to, you don't have to love wrestling, but we wanted to create once again, a platform for people to just be able to feel at home. Um, so make sure to follow the Java Tears Podcast Network on YouTube. 
um, any upcoming things that we have. Um, just save the date, July 31st. I can't say why or how or where or what. I can't answer all those questions yet, but all will be revealed. So if you love wrestling and you love the Java Tears podcast, make sure to save July 31st. It is super important. You heard it here first, everybody. Yeah, because we haven't, we haven't re-announced it. So, uh, so make sure to save that. But um, anyone also too that's out there that would love to come on the show, or do anything with either one of our um, podcasts, please make sure to, to hit us up directly. Um, and then also to every pay-per-view will be at Legends, so make sure to come out, support, have a drink. Yes, come through Legends, man. It's a black it's man, random man. This is definitely amazing ladies sipping conversations. We had a sip, we had a conversation, and all you have to do is get your cup and have a sip and conversation too. That's your man, random man, and I am out.